Breaking right now off the top at 612 News is over an explosion and a fire at the Lone Star NGL facility in Mount Bellevue. These are live pictures from the scene where you can see this large fireball. You can also see several emergency crews are on the scene trying to get that fire under control. Right now, there are some roads closed in this area. All of this happening within the past hour. We have calls out to find out exactly what happened here. Again, you are looking at live pictures from an explosion at a natural gas facility in Mount Bellevue. We'll keep you posted as we get more information. It's a back-to-school town hall fighting for students in rural counties to have greater access to the Internet. And now calling out one of Southeast Texas's districts for their reopening plans. 12 News reporter Jordan James spent some time with the two lawmakers today to make sure everyone has a seat at the table for this discussion. As the clock ticks down on the start of another school year. We're absolutely concerned. It's just it's nothing easy about this. State Representative James White and Joe Desagel are continuing to advocate for the needs of their constituents. In White's case, that would be better internet access and clear guidance from the state. We're dealing with a virus that's mutating, that's changing um, by, the, by the minute, right? So there may be some opportunities where we may have to make some changes. Representative Deschatel believes that superintendents are in a tough position after Texas Education Agency announced that schools could risk losing their funding if they shut down campuses completely due to orders issued by local health leaders. They need to not be penalized by loss of funding because they're trying to save the, the save lives of the teachers and staff. Both of them are participating in a town hall next week put on by the Texas Legislative Black Caucus, where they will invite superintendents from their district, along with reps from TEA, and look to bridge the gap between the community and policymakers. We want to provide this platform for all of our parents and taxpayers and students to get on, get on this call uh, and, and listen and even engage and ask questions. Port Nature's Grove ISD, which is located in Deschatel District, is one of the few districts not offering virtual learning, and he believes that is a mistake. And for the district not to have some uh, backup way that they could support these kids and support these families, uh, I, I don't really understand that. With the school year expected to be filled with challenges, White says communication is more important than ever. We're going to continue to er encourage our staff and teachers to continue talking to us, to continue asking those co constructive questions. The virtual town hall will be held on Monday, August 3rd from 6 till 730 on the Texas Legislative Black Caucus's Facebook page. Reporting here in Beaumont, Jordan James, 12 News. New tonight, the state's largest teacher association is responding to the state's attorney general, Ken Paxton. Now, he wrote a letter yesterday saying local governments do not have the legal right to stop schools from reopening. The teachers association had this to say. The state should do everything in its power to protect the lives of Texans and support a safe and productive learning environment, not create needless confusion. Now, after Paxton's letter came out, the TEA announced that school districts that keep classrooms closed because of a local health mandate, well, they won't be funded by the state. All new, we introduced you to seven-year-old Zabraylin Harrison last night. He is in the hospital recovering from COVID-19. And as school draws near, his mom says it's not the time to take any risks. 12 News reporter Victoria Dillion spoke with her today. Thankfully, Zabraylin did beat COVID-19, but now he's dealing with respiratory issues associated with the virus. His mom says with so many unknowns, they're not taking any risks. He tested positive for COVID earlier this month. His mom, Nikeria Shelton, who is also a nursing student, says they still don't know how he even contracted the virus and that doctors are still learning new things through him. While he is recovering again, he is now fighting MISC, which the CDC recognizes as a respiratory issue most common in children after beating the virus. It also appears in kids who simply come in contact with someone who does have it. Still, his mother remains grateful and says she isn't going to take any risks this upcoming I school expect, year. I would take all necessary precautions for the kids because, I mean, as I 
said before, this could have been a lot worse. Many parents are battling with a decision on whether to send their kids back to school or not. And I know that it's hard for some because we have to work. Like even me still, we have to work because our bills aren't going to stop. You know, when you have children, you have to make sacrifices. And I do not think that is time. And coming up at 10, we're looking into the demand increase for at-home tutors. And you can find more on Zabraylin's story on our website, 12newsnow.com. In Beaumont, Victoria De Leon, 12 News. New developments this evening. A study from Cincinnati Children's Hospital. Well, it's shedding light on how school closures in the spring may have impacted the spread of the coronavirus. Researchers found that closing these schools down early was associated with a 62% decrease in cases, while deaths dropped by over half. Associations were the largest in the state that the schools closed in early March. Breaking tonight, this is the worst day yet for deaths in the state. More than 300 Texans have passed away from the coronavirus today, and more than 9,000 new cases were reported. We want to go ahead and take a look outside right now. Chief Meteorologist Patrick Vaughn is in our Storm Tracker Center tracking what looks like the tail end of some uh, cloudy days we've had for this uh, past week, Patrick. Yeah, it looks like uh, things will be improving, Dejanique, as we finish out the work week. And uh, this evening, rain's pretty much winding down. Not much left across the area, just some isolated patches of light rain. Uh, just across into uh, Hardin County and uh, things winding down up in the lakes area. And that'll be the case over the next hour. Temperatures, it just depends on where, if you got rain or not this afternoon. Uh, we've uh, rain cooled over most of the area into the near 80 degree range into the mid 80s. Otherwise, uh, we'll keep a 20% coverage. But uh, as you can see on radar, things quickly winding down. Not much of a temperature fluctuation. But it looks like hotter days expected coming up. Uh, tomorrow and Friday and uh, for the weekend uh, some improvement uh, looks like some showers and storms in the morning on Saturday but improving in the afternoon and Sunday even hotter and drier more on your forecast coming up. President Trump wrapping up his Texas trip in Odessa late today. The president signed four new pipeline permits, which in part will allow Texas to export crude oil to Mexico. The president also announced he would be extending export authorizations. This was welcome news for Texas's oil and gas industry that was hit particularly hard by this pandemic. An alarming trend has now arrived in Texas. Mystery seeds have been showing up in mailboxes all around the nation. Most of them look like this. Well, 12 News investigator Lauren Hensley is giving us some inside info as to what exactly you should do if you get these surprise seeds. Lauren. Dejanique, if you took a close look at that image, you would see the characters on the packaging label while well, they're Chinese letters. Experts say don't open these seeds, don't plant these seeds, and here are their concerns. We received a small manila envelope in the mail last week. This wasn't something Carol Howe ordered. Indicating it was from China. A bag of mysterious seeds sent to a Bartonville farm. These look very much like uh, a cucumber or squash seed. The packaging label is in Chinese. Also a red plastic, oh, some sort of implement that we, I have no idea what it's for. And Carol quickly realized she isn't the only one. When I looked online, I saw where there were some other states. People from other parts of Texas, Virginia, even Pennsylvania posted something similar. We don't know what they are. So, okay, so we don't want to plant them or anything else. Janet Laminack is the Texas A&M AgriLife Extension horticulture agent for Denton County. We just really want to be careful with these because of the, you know, the impacts it could have environmentally. While not all seeds look the same, the fear is they could be an invasive species, which we've already experienced in Texas. Fire ants and kudzu vine and zebra mussels. I mean, all of these are things that came from somewhere else. 
So if you receive these mysterious seeds, don't open it, don't trash it, don't plant it. Instead, seal it in a bag and contact the USDA to come pick it up. We're going to keep a close eye on this one. Lauren Hensley, 12 News. Lower rain chances and hotter temperatures expected the next couple of days.